lecture this is I'll just give a brief introduction about myself and then I'll just give you a perspective of uh, a social enterprise social ventures uh, social entrepreneurs and uh, what, what what is this buzzword about right now when did it come about and uh, how do you actually understand the social business and uh, then after that I'm going to share a few perspectives from my end in terms of uh, how do you make uh, a business or social venture really uh, you know grow and achieve all the economic goals as well as social goals that are put forward. So about Connexus, uh, we started this organization about two years ago and the main uh, intention behind starting this organization was uh, to uh, make social service easy for people. Uh, so when we say make uh, social service easy for people, we mean uh, you know we could be acting like a bridge or we could be acting like uh, that catalyst that is helping people uh, you know do social service so what role we really play over here is you know clearing all the myths of uh, the social development sector and uh, you know helping people uh, uh, you know take that first step into doing uh, social service so we do this for individuals we do this for uh, hnis we also work with corporates we work with uh, uh, we work with communities and clubs as well uh, so for corporates we have a whole set of CSR services where we build their philosophies, we build their strategy, uh, we try and uh, align the CSR to their business. For individuals again we sit around with HNIs, we sit around with uh, and understand their needs of uh, social uh, development and why do they want to take this step and we assist them. So this is what the Connexus has been doing since the past two years. Uh, so. I mainly uh, look at uh, more on the operational ends when we actually uh, start rolling out the projects with the clients and we go onto the field and we start delivering. Uh, now I'm going to get on and talk about uh, social enterprises. Uh, there are a lot of perspectives about what is a social enterprise, like how do you really classify an enterprise to be a social enterprise? Uh, is it, is it if is it, is it if an organization has a triple bottom line approach, that means they are looking at economic development, social development and uh, environmental development, is that a social enterprise or, or is, it an, is it an organization which is uh, solving a social issue uh, as well as making uh, some uh, uh, profits out of it, is that a social uh, uh, enterprise. So there are no clear defined criteria in terms of you know if your uh, profitability is below market level then you would be a social enterprise or you know if you're looking at these XYZ causes only then you would be a social enterprise but uh, the perception of a social enterprise is uh, developed only when you look at an organization holistically in terms of uh, you know how the structure of the organization is how the governance is uh, what is the main business area the organization is working in what are the geographical areas the organization is working in what are, the what are the people in the organizations, behind the organization, the key stakeholders of the organizations. So only after looking at all of these perspectives can you actually you know, form an opinion whether an organization is a, is a social organization or not. So the social entrepreneurship has been developing since a couple of years now, but uh, uh, the, the, key, uh, you know, the key encouragement came about in 2005-2006 where uh, Rockefeller Foundation in the US uh, you know, started a concept called uh, impact investing. Uh, so they wanted people to come up with social businesses and they were thinking of ways in, in how they could attract people to start a so social venture. So instead of finding people with innovative ideas, they started looking for people who would want to invest into an innovative idea which solves a social issue. So they started something called impact investing. So they started approaching investors and telling them that, uh, okay, let's look at investing from a different angle. You would be getting some money, but it would be not as much as you would in, get in if you invested in else, elsewhere businesses. So from there on, people started looking, from there on the impact investing developed into social entrepreneurs and social businesses. And now, uh, all around the world, and even in India, we've reached a stage where, uh, you know, the government is encouraging it. There are corporate houses, there are social organizations, uh, there are associations uh, all surrounding the, uh, 
uh, you know, social entrepreneurship or development concept because this is the way forward that even uh, uh, bigger organizations and government feels that India has. Uh, India is a vast uh, country and to solve all the problems and only expect it to happen from the government and the big uh, corporates and MNCs would be difficult. So there has to be uh, you know, nurturing of such organizations who can uh, sustain themselves and also and also solve social issues. So when I was uh, within my organization, uh, when we were looking at uh, uh, you know, being a social venture, there were a lot of challenges that we faced. And I would just like to highlight basic three challenges uh, that we, for, we saw. Uh, one was about perception. Uh, the second was about uh, the structure and governance and uh, third was about valuing and measuring economic goals versus social goals. So when I, when I talk about perception, I mean uh, you know, perception of the customers, perception of uh, my suppliers and vendors, perception of my employees. If I position myself as a social enterprise and I approach a customer, the first thought that the customer has is, Okay, he has to be cheap and he has to maybe you know sacrifice on quality which is not always true I mean though I'm a social enterprise I do have my cost I do have uh, my uh, baggage of my investment so I really need to uh, recover all of that and obviously move forward so the perception I really need to change the perception of the customer in terms of though I'm a social organization it is not that I'm going to sacrifice on my quality uh, because I'm not driven by uh, you know constraints of uh, you know working on low cost, so changing that perception was one of our biggest challenges in terms of uh, you know that we are uh, though we are on a social cause, we are on a social issue, but it is not that uh, we sacrifice any of the other business uh, standards and business uh, professionalism. The other is uh, when you're dealing with suppliers and vendors, uh, because if they have built a perception that. It may not be sustainable to align with someone who is uh, starting on a social side because they are there tomorrow, they are not there tomorrow, you know, how do we match up with them and plus they always have a choice of going to someone who is going to offer them much more uh, in terms of uh, their pricing and everything. The third most important thing is your employees. Uh, the type of people you recruit in your organization, if, if they are not on the same wavelength as you are in terms of uh, Though we are working towards a social cause, it is it is not that uh, uh, you know we we uh, we forget our business sense and we forget the standards that we want to maintain. So uh, having those employees, I mean, when when we went, got into the field, we we didn't have uh, talented trained employees. So what we invested a lot of time in was actually building a team to come up with the same standards. We 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 had a team, and for seven to eight months, we were just sitting in a room and uh, you know bringing the standards of the team to the same level because we as an organization had to set a certain standards for ourselves and we had to see that the people and the employees that are coming in are also up to the same standards because they are going to be the face for the employees they are going to be the people going out uh, to the customers and talking to them uh, the other thing is retaining this talent because once you have the talent and you spend a lot of investment in terms of grooming them and growing them it is how do you keep them with you with the organization I mean, are they always aligned to your organization goals or they have other aspirations in terms of their career? So, when perception is, you need to change your employee perception as well and tell him that uh, though we are in the social field, though we are working towards a social cause, we still are a business, we still have to work professionally, we still have to maintain standards. The other important aspect I think uh, which gives customers a lot of confidence is having a proper structure and governance where all these social organizations usually fail is uh, they tend to forget about the governance and they get too emotional about uh, you know having uh, systems that uh, you know rely on people more than anything else so we you need to really shift from that and put in processes and put in standards which are self uh, governing and self controlling once you have that in place then obviously you're going to run like a business and you're not going to find uh, yourself in positions where uh, you know you cannot uh, keep up with the goals of the organization. And the third most uh, important thing that we usually f have a fight between is uh, okay what do we look at? We have set our economic goals 
we set our social goals in terms of uh, where we want to be socially and in terms of where we want to be economically. Uh, usually what problem have, what, what the social entrepreneurs face is they get more inclined towards uh, delivering social value than economic value. Uh, in a longer term that is not really sustainable for the organization. Uh, you, it is always important for the top management, the top leadership to maintain that vision of growing economically and socially. And to drive that balance, it all has to inculcate into the culture of the employees, into, into the culture of the organization. So the top management leadership of driving goals has to be of paramount importance. And that vision is all, always to stay there in terms of we need to balance our economic and social uh, goals of the organization and move towards that. Uh, having said that, I'm just going to hand over to Neha, who's going to talk a little bit more about sustainability and uh, you know, how to grow an organization and you know achieve those economic goals. And later on, probably we are going to take some questions after uh, most of our.